different songs. <laughs> My ear's on.
bosses. Pay attention.
know that I've been proud. I talked to my grandson in Oregon the other night, and I told him, I said, honey, every time I'm all saying that song, I think about you because I would sing it to him and rock him, which you all hear many times. And I'd rock him, and I thought, you know, I wore him out saying that to him. I'd sing something else. He looked up at me, this little bit of me, said, Mama, blessings on me. I said, okay, honey, blessings on me. That's what you're going to say. But you know, God is a good God, and there's so many people that we all know or have known, including my husband. They're done up there waiting on us, you know? And uh, I sometimes I think, Lord, I just, but then once they told me I had to stick around longer because I had to So I guess I've still got something to do, right? Yep. If it's done, but I invite people. Like I stopped down there, uh, these two kids, I call them kids, walking, you know, and I said, you're going the wrong way. And they was going toward their house. Trevor, and your wife, down there. And I said, well, are we going to come on back? You want to. But he said, uh, anyway, you know, we appreciate it. But anyway, everybody just have a good evening. And let's praise the Lord. Like you said a while ago, let's just get in and praise the Lord because, you know, that's the very thing we're here for, is to give him praise and glory. I, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, the thing of it is, you know, like for a message, he has to give to you, don't we, Brother Joe, and everything like that. But the, really the only thing we can give him back is praise. And that's the truth, that we have to give him praise. And sometimes I kind of have to get to the house, but I'm telling you. <laughs> Come on. All right. Has the Lord been good to anybody? Amen. 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 He sure has been good. He's, he's merciful, he's gracious, and uh, just so thankful for all the many blessings he's blessed us with. And not just in, in the past, but you know what he's going to bless us with. And, uh, you know, if I was to. Uh, Take a poll here and ask uh, everybody individually, but I'll just you, know, you can do an amen. Uh, I know everybody here loves this country. Amen. Sometimes we we don't like and, and the direction it's going. We don't like the things that's happening, and that's worldwide. You know, that's that's everything that's going on in the world. But uh, tonight uh, I've got a message that. Gosh, it's been stirring my heart for a little while. I just hadn't got it put together. And I uh, uh, got to listening to some other ministers. And, and you know what? They're right on what I've got. And uh, I listened to one on the weekend that uh, my goodness, the scriptures were just they're right on to what the Lord was giving me. And uh, this is a little bit weighty, and it's just a little bit hard, but it's something that's got to be done. And I've got a minister of this tonight. It's called the, the, the title of this message is called "God Votes the Bible." Sure uh, just uh, you know, it's not uh, maybe, and, and it's not a, that big of an amen message if you don't want to amen it. But it's something that's got to got to be talked about. It's got to be said uh, because uh, we're in a time that uh, uh, everything that we do as the body of Christ is going to matter. Every person that proclaims Jesus Christ, and not just entitled, but does, he said, you know, you can be a proclaimer of the word. It's like uh, 
uh, act, put an action behind your faith. You can you can proclaim it, but also if you want to see faith in action, you've got to be a doer. You can't just be somebody that talks it, but you got to walk it. Right. And sometimes your walk, if it doesn't line up with your talk, that's why things are not happening in our lives. And, that, and that's all of us. So, uh, you can turn there. Becky's going to put it up there. But we're going to start at the scripture that we quote probably the most here at the House of Prayer in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. That's one I'm going to start with. So I've got a few scriptures that I've got to, I've got to talk about. Second Chronicles and, and uh, you know, like I said, we could probably quote it, but we could but we're going to read it. And Second uh, Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people now, let's stop right there. Now he didn't say the world. He didn't say the eastern part of the world. He didn't say the Middle East. He didn't say the western part. He says, if my people. So if this verse starts out, if my people, then we, we number one, have to say, if we're reading this and we're asking questions, who's his people? We're going to say we are. Now I know the context of this verse is in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. He's talking to Israel. Yeah. He's speaking to Israel. Would you say Israel is God's people? Yes. Was Israel God's people at that particular time? Yes. Today, if you proclaim Jesus Christ as your Savior, are you God's people? Yes. Am I God's people? Yes. 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 Right. So, Scripture is Scripture. Yes. To not, not to take this out of context. There's a specific reason that God put everything in His Word. He's speaking to Israel in this text here. But he's also speaking to my people. So you know what the Bible says. The world says it this way. History repeats itself. It comes back around. The Bible says that which was, has been, and that which has been will be again. There's no new thing under the sun. So as we know, if we want to study what's going to happen in the future, what do we need to do? Go to the Word and go to the past of what happened in the Word of God. Because everything is circular and it's going to come right back around. Right. That's why we're reading this. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and heal their land. How many knows well, we need a land here? We, and I'm talking about the United States of America. I'm talking about Israel. Uh, you know, the conflicts that Israel was going through. We need a healing in our land for, for His people. Let's pray. Father, we thank You so much, Lord, that we're here together, together in Your name tonight. My brothers and my sisters, You have this word for us. It's, it's a heavy word, but Lord, You're going to help us get this out. Let me say everything that needs to be said, but don't let me say anything that doesn't need to be said. We honor You and praise You tonight, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We know we are His people. And, he, and if things are going to change, it's going to require us. It's going to require us to pray and seek His face. No, no other country is going to... Do you know, and, and I'll, I'll say this, there are countries, especially in NATO or in the United Nations, that will come to the aid of other countries. Do you know the way it's looking that there's a good possibility that ain't nobody going to come to help if we were in desperate need. Because we're the United States of America. We always go to other people. Now, I'm not saying that Israel wouldn't come to our aid. I'm not saying other countries wouldn't uh, come if we absolutely need them. But there, it doesn't appear that there's people lining up to come and help us because we've always been able to help each other and help other nations. But, Folks, we're in, a, we're in a condition as a nation that we're so far in debt. I don't know how anybody would, if, if they needed something, how not not just them, but how could we help somebody else if we're so if we're so far in debt? As a, what, thirty-four coming up on thirty-five trillion dollars. There's a payday sometime. That's got to come due, and we just keep going further and further. I'm very concerned, very concerned about that because. It could, could come sooner than later. Mm -hmm. If it comes sooner and, and we, we end up being bankrupt, I'm going to pay the bill. 
whether you're in private business or whether you're, you're getting a, a check maybe from the government, they may send you an IOU saying, I can't pay. But we as God's people, who do we depend on? We don't depend on the government. Folks, if we're dependent on the government to take care of us, we're in bad shape. Everything the government touches ends up being messed up. That's a, that is a fact. That ain't, that ain't just my opinion. That's a fact. Everything they touch, they mess up. Because it's controlled by man. It's controlled by human beings. I'm going to go God's way, and we need to go God's way. I'm not going to get into politics, but I am going to be political. I have to be. And I'm going to read you why. I'm reading this in the ERV, which is called the Easy Read Version. And basically, it just takes the wording of the King James and makes it translates it into today's words. I asked Becky if she had it, but I told her she would just put it up on the uh, screen in the new, new King James. But it's Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. The Lord's talking to Ezekiel. And He said, I'm going to set you as a watchman. And you're going to have to, to, to be a what they call the, the town crier. Or you're going to have to be the herald. You're going to have to be the one. Yeah. Somebody that sees danger and you've got to warn them. And God lays this out very specific. Listen to this. Ezekiel 33 and 1. The word of the Lord came unto me. He said, this is Ezekiel, Son of man, speak to your people. Say to them, whenever I bring enemy soldiers to fight against the country, the people choose someone to be a watchman. If this guard sees enemy soldiers coming, and he blows the trumpet and warns the people. If people hear the warning, but hear the warning but ignore it, the enemy will capture them and take them away as prisoners. They will be responsible for their own death. Verse 5. They heard the trumpet, but they ignored the warning. So they are responsible for their own deaths. If they had paid attention to the warning, they could have saved their own lives. Verse 6. But what if the guard sees the enemy soldiers coming, but does not blow the trumpet? Since he doesn't warn the people, the enemy will capture them and take them away as prisoners. They will be taken away because they sinned. But the guard will also be responsible for their deaths. Now, son of man, I am choosing you to be a watchman for the family of Israel. If you hear a message from my youth, you must warn the people for me. I might say to you, these evil people will die. They must go to warn the people will die because they sin. But I will make you responsible for their deaths. But if you do not warn the people, the evil people to charge their, to change their lives and stop sinning, and if they refuse to stop, they will die because they sin. But you have saved your life. So what God is basically telling them, telling Ezekiel, He said, "I put you responsible that you're going to be a watchman. You're going to watch, and if you see danger coming, you sound the alarm. If they heed to the alarm and they warn the people, and the people don't do anything, it's on the people." But if you see evil coming or you see danger coming and you don't sound the alarm and people get uh, messed up, they get killed, they get uh, in, in a condition because you didn't do something, then I'll require, I think King James referred, I'll require their blood at your hands. So folks, this is one of those messages that stirs on my heart and when the, the uh, scriptures came to me, it's like, you know what? This fits you as as being a church leader, as being a senior pastor, as being someone that is put in a position of leadership. And it's my responsibility. If I see danger coming, I've got to warn you. I've got to tell you about it. If I don't tell you about it, then you don't know to act on it, or you don't act on it, then I, it's going to be required of me. I've got to give an account. I've got to stand before the Lord one day. If I give something out that I believe, and I truly believe this is from the Lord, if I give something out that's from the Lord, and you have to, I give it out, then my responsibility is done. Now it's up to you what you do with it, okay? Now, as always, I do not and will not uh, uh, endorse any candidate. I will not do that. That's not my job. That's not my responsibility. It's up to you all to choose whom you're going to support, who you're going to vote for. My job is to tell you to look at the Word of God, search out the Word of God, Know what the Word of God says, and you base your decisions 
on the Word of God. That's, that's my responsibility. We're always, always to look what the Word says and back up what the Word says. And we've got a responsibility to do that. I'm going to tell you this. We, we're, of course, I'm not telling you something you don't know. We're coming up on a presidential election. We've got one or two people that's going to be our, be elected president. Okay? Now, I'm not, I'm not endorsing anyone. I'm not saying you need who this... That's up to you. you you got to choose. What I'm saying is, look at it this way. Take the two people out. Just remove them. Now, they're the ones going to be in the office, but remove them as, as, person, as a person. Don't look at the person. Don't look at their personalities. Because both of them, folks, I'll tell you right now, and they'll probably would agree with me, they're not perfect. They're not going to be perfect. And let me tell you this is the body of Christ. We're not electing a Savior. We're not electing a king, and we're not electing a prince. We've got, we've got the prince of peace. We've got the king of kings. We've got the Lord of lords. That's who we serve. As long as we're on this earth, and as long as we're in the United States of America the way it is, then we're going to be under, uh, sitting under a government of, of a president, a senate, and a house of, of Congress. We're, sitting, we're, we're going to be under that. You go back and look at the, what the Bible says when a righteous king or a king that followed what the Lord said to do, you know what happened? Israel prospered. Yes. When another king took, uh, took the office, and the Bible says it this way, and they did evil in the sight of the Lord, you know what happened to Israel? The court was, they, they just about was destroyed, and, it, and they were under a curse because power the leader goes is how the country goes. And God holds the holds, way comes the people because that's who the judgment comes on. Is the people. I'm telling you the importance. Daniel chapter 2. I'm going to read the, a few verses here. Daniel chapter 2 verse 18. That they would desire mercies of the, of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, that Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and he sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He reveals the deep secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and in the light dwelleth within him. With, with the title of this message, God, God Boats the Bible. We, we don't have to go back and spend a lot of time on this because it's been talk, I've talked about this in the past. The way God has set this up, if you're, if you're going to be on this earth and you're going to operate... As a spirit, you're going to have to have a dirt body to work there. You've got to have a body. When in, in the, in the when Adam and Eve was in the in the garden, you, even if the devil was going to work and, and tempt as they did Adam and Eve, you know what he had to have? He had to have a body to work there, and he used the serpent. If God established this law and we and, and set it out in His Word, and we know He doesn't go back on His Word. You know what God could have done if, it, if it, hey, He didn't set it up this way? He could have saved mankind from His throne in heaven. He could have because He's God. But he said, I can't go back on my word, so here's what I've got to do. I've got to send my only begotten Son in the form of a man. Because, because my spirit has to operate within a human, human body. And that's what He did. He sent Jesus, His only begotten Son, to be born of a woman, but His... His Father is the Heavenly Father, not, not an earthly Father. He sends Him here. He was 100% man, but He was 100% God. How did God show up? He showed up in Jesus. He showed up in flesh. He showed up in human being. Jesus, as He was praying to the Lord, and I believe it's in John chapter 18. I don't have that in my notes. but He's praying to the Father. And He said that you and I are one. This is Jesus saying that Praying. He said, Father, you and I are one. And my prayer is that they would be one 
talking about his body, talking about the, his, his followers, they would be one as you and I are one. So, Jesus said it was expedient that I leave because if I leave, the Holy Spirit won't come. So Jesus said, I've got to go back to the Father, but He said, I won't leave you comfortable. I will send the Holy Spirit and He'll come and He will dwell within you. He's the Spirit of truth. He is the comforter and He will dwell inside of you. The exact thing what God wanted from the very beginning was to come and have fellowship and dwell among His people. And He was able to do that when Jesus restored everything back to His creation and now He can have His presence dwell within us through His precious Holy Spirit. Hallelujah and thank the Lord for that. That we've got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us, that leads us and teaches us and guides us. When we do what we're supposed to do and we're in His Word and we're praying, we're studying, no matter what we're doing, we could be in a political season, we could be in a season where there's, there's uh, some type of sickness or something going on in our lives, but when we line up with what the Word of God says, and when we line up with, with praying and seeking Him, just like His Word tells us to do, He is obligated to work through us and help us. So when I say God votes the Bible, God shows up at the polls every time that there's an election. And you know how He shows up in the polls? You know how He shows up in the polls? Through us. God votes. God walks in there and He makes the mark. How does He do that? Because we bring Him with us. Right? And folks, we should be led by Him. We should be led by the Spirit of God when we step behind. It's not a curtain anymore necessarily. It's kind of a block off booth. But when we go in there and we vote, we do it because God leads us. And God guides us to do what's right. And folks, this, this, this election... It would be one thing if it was pretty narrow you know, as far as the positions and the values, but, but it's pretty far apart. Pretty far apart. When you, who, no matter who you choose when you walk in, you've got a clear, distinct decision to make because it's, there's no borderline, there's no fencing area. It's either one way or it's the other. And you and I have to choose that. We have to choose the direction that we want our country to go. That's the important thing. Because so goes the leader, so goes the country. Yes, sir. Now, now there, there's policies, there's influences. And folks, we're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about city and country. We're talking about the United States of America, where the President of the United States is known as the leader of the free world. Yeah. Now, who would the devil want to get a hold of the most? The leader of the free world. He would want to influence that person. Because it's a person. It's one. Yeah. And with his or her pen, they've got a whole lot of power. A whole lot of power. God shows up in people. Just like I said. God showed up and He told Abraham, He said, Abraham, you've got a place, you're living here, but I'm going to send you to a place you don't have a clue where you're going. This is where I want you to go. And you know what Abraham did? God said it. I'm gone. He and He spoke to Abraham. He talked to Abraham. God showed up in Abraham. This is the way He did with Moses. God didn't physically come down, or he, or, you know, he not physically, but he didn't even spirit. He came down spiritually in his voice when he spoke to Abraham, when he spoke to Moses, and he told him to go to Pharaoh. Then you tell Pharaoh this. He showed up in Joshua. You told Joshua, "This is what you need to do. This is where you're going. There's a land I've got prepared for you. It's called the Promised Land. And I'm taking you through it." And he says, you just do exactly what I tell you to do. You've already won. You've already won. You just got to go take it. You know, Israel had to fight. They still had to fight. But they already won. And they couldn't get that. I mean, that sounds odd. Because you think they're going in to, to try to win a victory. But they already won the victory. They said to go and take it. They had to go do it. But God said this. There can't be sin in the camp. If they're sin in the camp, you can't progress on them. And they conquered some major places. 
that God already gave them the victory for. Right. And they got to a little old place called Ai, a little old small community, and they got their everlasting coats dusted. <laughs> they got their coats dusted. And Joshua was, was confused. Right. And God had to say, hey, what did I tell you? He didn't say no word, but he said, they're sin. And he can't go further. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn. You know what that word turn means? Repent. Right. Repent. <clears throat> now on Thursday nights or whenever we, we, we come out here, I try to make it as much as I can out here on Thursday nights at 6 o'clock and pray. And my prayer it, 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 through, that, through that hour with uh, J.P. Rebecca and, and uh, Rex and Janice, all we come in and we, we just, the uh, only things on our mind is coming in and praying. We pray for our nation. We pray for our country. And I know other people are doing it now. And, and I pray that you are doing it wherever you are. If you're not doing it here, pray. At least pray. Pray and ask the Lord. To, as you pray, say, Lord, I want to, as Moses stood in for, the, for Israel when you were about to destroy him, I want to stand in for the United States of America. If the Lord spared Israel for one person standing in the gap, you think what he would do for his people around this, this United States of America, praying and asking the Lord to, to save our country, to, to stop anything that's, to the, any evil that's trying to take over this country. And if, if, one, if Moses stood in, and we, we as his body standing in, don't you think he would answer that? I don't think that he would, because he would. We, we need to turn from our wicked way. When you're, talking about, you're talking about his people that are blood-bought Christians, people that claim to be Christians, people that, that serve the Lord, they go to church every Sunday. You mean to tell me they have to turn from their wicked ways? Why are they doing wicked anyway? Isn't it odd thought that, that God has to tell his people to turn from their wicked ways? That, that, it gets me that... It, that that he's not talking to you. When I read that first, I didn't get the, the, the my people. And when I first, years ago, when I when I started studying that scripture, I said, that's Christians. Yeah. He's not talking about anybody else. When our Heavenly Father sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, laid down His life for us, He went to, back to the Father, He sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in us. Right. God shows up in people and God shows up at the poles. Right. And he expects us to do what his word tells us. The kings in Israel, when they did right, I, I know I said this, but, uh, but I'm going to another place here. When the kings in Israel did that which was right, was right in the sight of the Lord, Israel was blessed. When the kings did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, so they went through hard times, they were cursed. But when we do as a nation, if you think about Israel, you think about the United States, we were founded. It, it, the, the parallels are, are just amazing when you start looking at it. Perry Stone did a book called Plucking Eagle's Wings. I don't know if that, that book is still out there in public, uh, in, in publication or not. But in that book, he lays out, I think, what was it, 16 or 18 different, similar, 16 or 18 parallels about the United States and Israel, where Israel crossed the Red Sea to get to the Virgin Nation. We crossed the sea to get to this nation. Uh, Israel was founded upon the first five books, the Torah. Our Constitution, Declaration, and Bill of Rights were, were based upon the Torah, the first five books, and the book of Isaiah. There's so many similarities. I, I listed them at one time in a Sunday school message, but uh, you, you can't even find that book. It's, pro it's probably out there somewhere on Amazon, Plucking the Eagles, Wings, if you want to know. But there's so many parallels to the United States and Israel. If we are His people, and we are. I'm not saying that as a question. If we're His people, then we line up with Israel. That's why it's so important, folks, that we support Israel. That we back Israel. Because we are in line with them. If you go look at, look at other nations, other nations are not founded like we are. Other nations are not set up like we are. Other, the United States and Israel have parallels that mean something. It's because there is no doubt in my mind all you have to do is, number one, just go to Washington and look around and see all the scriptures that's laid out up there. Our country was founded upon the Word of God. And it was ordained by God when we became a nation to do what we did because there is no excuse or no reason why we should have defeated a professional British army. 
with farmers and a few military men. But we have the Lord God that says, this is what I want and this is what you'll do. And we had a praying leader by the name of George Washington. And our leader, when he was elected president in New York, he took the oath of office. After he took the oath of office, he led the congressional procession out the federal building, down the street to a place called St. Paul's Cathedral. And we got to go there. And George Washington knelt down with the rest of the Continental Congress, the first Continental Congress, and prayed and dedicated the land to the Lord God of heaven. That's why it's so important. That's why God looks at this nation different than He does other nations. He looks at Israel different. He looks at us different. And He says, this is what you have to do if you want to continue to be blessed. If you, if, you know, you, I know we still give money away, as I said earlier, but folks, we become the, the, the lender, or, not, or we become the borrower, not the lender. We, we should, as, as much as people pay in taxes, we should be flowing in money. We should be able to just hand money out to these nations and, and, and not have anything owed back here. We should be able to feed the, the, the hungry nations, the, the famines that's going on in these other nations. We should be able to just supply them with, with food, with medical supplies and everything else. Proverbs 14.34 Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Romans 13.1 Let every soul be subject to the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained to God. Whosoever though resists the the power resists the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to do thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a, a, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, you must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. I've used that scripture many times with people when I was working in law enforcement and, and, I, and uh, people would come to me and say, how can you be a Christian? And especially, it says, when I was called into the ministry, how can you be a preacher and carry a gun and you may have to take somebody's life? And the Lord, I, I, I didn't have anybody lead me there, but I remember reading something in Romans chapter Romans, but I, but I had to find it. which chapter it was. And when I found it, I said, praise God, this is exactly the scripture I was looking for when somebody was trying to ask. A lot of the time they were doing it just to provoke me. They wasn't doing it for no other reason. But when I found that in Romans, it was Romans 13, I said, that's exactly. That's talking about law enforcement. It's talking about military. He said, if you do good, you don't have to worry about it. He said, if you're doing evil, he said, you better, you better be concerned. Because these are ministers of God that's sent to bring judgment and justice. Folks, it matters who's in the office that controls the departments of who's bringing what and justice and judgment to the whole United States of America. It matters. It matters. And folks, I'm going to tell you this. If you go to Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, I'm not, I, I've got to be able to read, but, but I want, this is what I want to say. Proverbs 6, 16 says, These six things does the Lord hate. The Lord hate. You mean to tell me that there's some things that God hates? We're talking about a God of love. He loves everybody. Yes, He does. Everything about love is God. No, no, no. God is just. God is love. But not everything of love is God. Because everybody's trying to hang these other things. Well, God loves. God loves us. God loves all people. Yes, that's true. Well, but God don't love the things that people do. Right. But they try to incorporate it in, in the love of God. 
We serve a loving God. We serve a long-suffering God. We serve a God that doesn't just fly off and get angry. And I'm so thankful for that. <laughs> Folks, we serve a just God. And there's one day that He's going to bring judgment. He's going to bring it in, in, in such a way that uh, it says, the Bible says it this way, that there will be what comes up on this earth that has never been the scene before since the beginning of time. That's what kind of judgment's coming. The wrath of God upon the wicked, upon the evil. Matthew 24 says it. There's judgment coming that this earth, the earth has never seen. Because He's a just God. If he, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. He said, here's the way. The way is through Jesus. This is your outlet. This is your safety. This is how you get through. But if you choose not, there's no other choice but you going down the destruction road. You're going the, dam the damnation way. The damnation way. And it's not God's choosing, it's yours. It's mine. Because He prepared it. Six things that God hates. Seven things He ate is abomination unto Him. The folks that, that, that were on verse 17 where it says hands that shed innocent blood, sometimes we think, well, that's that person with the gun. Well, that's that, and, and, and it very well could be, that's that person that got the big, that got the fight because they got so angry and they choked somebody to death or they beat somebody to death. And it could be, the person could be an innocent. Folks, when you talk about the shedding of innocent blood, we're talking about an innocent life that's in the belly of a woman. That is an innocent life. Now, there's there's people that try to tap dance around this. Okay, they try to ease it, and they, and, and there's some that, that definitely play politics with it. And abortion is something you can't play politics with. You can't you can't say well. I believe it up to this point, or I believe it up to this many weeks, or I believe either you're pro-life or you're not. You're either pro-life or you're not. There's no giving in to this. God is pro-life. He says it. He says it. He says he's pro-life. He, he proclaims it. He told Jeremiah, I knew you before. I even formed you. Human beings are made in the image and the likeness of God. Right. And what you're saying is that, the, that God's creation isn't worth life that God gave it to. Who is anybody, who is anybody to say that they have the right to take some, some person's life that God brought into this world, that God brought onto this earth and breathed the breath of life into? Every breath we take, it comes from Him. Amen. If it were me, and if I didn't know anything about the Word of God, and I was just, if I, was, if I didn't know the Lord and I was an unbeliever, there's something that if I, if I was, one of you all pointed this out to me, you know, there's six things that God hates. Well, yeah, I do believe that there's a God out there, but I don't really know it. I would probably want to know these six things, definitely the seven things. And if I saw these things, well, the Lord hates this, and the Lord hates the proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart to the vice, wicked imaginations, feet that are swift running to mischief, follow a false witness that speak lies, and he that sows discord with the road. You know, they've got to stay away from me. If God hates something, I'm going to stay away from it. Matter of fact, if God hates it, and I, and I belong to Him, I'm going to be just like Him right. in His Word, and I'm going to speak everything against it. Because that's my duty. I've got, I, as a watchman, I've got a duty to tell people that are Christians that claim to be Christians, you better stay away from these seven things that God hates. And you better speak against them too. You better not support it. You better not say, well, if this or if that, well, you're either pro-life or you're not. Amen. There's no way between. And I know some of the excuses, and, and I will get into that. 
but I will get into excuses. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. Hands that shed innocent blood. Well, that's the doctors. It's not my hands. Hmm. I'm going into the voting booth. And I know one side is against abortion. And I know the other side is pro-abortion. But one side just talks me just say mean and hateful things. Well, the other side, they just keep talking, like uh, talking in circles. And they cackle and laugh a lot. They keep saying the same things over and over. Well, I just don't like this one, but I don't like that. Well, you know, it's in between. If you're in between, you know exactly what you need to do. Let's see what the Bible says. Yeah. There's six things God hates. And one of them is the shedding of innocent blood. There is no way that I could support anybody that says at a convention that happened this year and they pulled up an abortion van outside of the convention yeah. and give free abortions yeah. and free vasectomies. Yeah. Let me make sure I've read this right. <coughs> Hands that shed innocent blood. Yep, I read that right. See if I can twist that a little bit. Because I don't want necessarily to vote this other way. Well, maybe I shouldn't just vote at all. You know what you just did? You made a choice. There's no fences, folks. You can't, you can't ride the fence. Too far apart. No Too far apart. There ain't no fence that long. you got to choose. Thank the person out. Take the personality out. Look what they support. What about, uh, what about abortion? What about immigration? Do you know that we serve a God of borders? Mm -hmm. See anybody shaking their head? No. <laughs> Acts 17, I believe it's 26. Y'all like government control? Be controlled by the government. Have the government tell you what you can do and what you can't do. I don't. I don't want government to have more control. I have less control. It's on the ballot. One side says we need more government control, more government restrictions. One side says we don't. What about voter ID required to vote and must be a U.S. citizen? Yes. Andy, I brought that up. Uh, this is on the ballot in Brown County. Well, it's on the ballot all across the state. But this is on the ballot. And Andy, Andy brought up a good point. It's a little bit confusing if you don't know. But I'm going to read it. You're going to read that church. Yeah. You're going to talk about that in church? Yes. We've got to talk about the church. Yeah. I have to. I'm under a mandate, folks, and I've got to talk about it. Constitutional Amendment number one. Are you in favor of amending sections 145 and 155 of the Constitution of Kentucky to prohibit persons who are non-citizens of the United States from being allowed to vote in the Commonwealth of Kentucky as stated below? Stated below, it's, it's, a, it's a long read, and it gives you the, the, the qualifications as a citizen of the United States. It goes into every citizen of the United States, age of 18, who has, resides in the state for one year. It gives the requirements. That's what it says below. But the way it is written, it says, are you in favor of amending sections 145 and 155 of the Constitution of Kentucky to prohibit persons who are non-citizens of the United States from being allowed to vote in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Now, it's, it's, it's warranted. And you know what? Sometimes they do that on purpose. Number one, an attorney has written it to make it, it's, it's complicated. But are you in favor? Are you in favor of amending it? The Constitution of Kentucky to prohibit persons but yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. <coughs> well, uh, let me say it this way. Yes, I am. <laughs> Y'all, I'm not telling anybody how to vote. 
I'm not saying that, but this is an amendment to the Kentucky Constitution. Either you're going to say it is, and I don't, I don't want to, I won't get me confused. Well, this says, are you in favor to prohibit or to not allow any illegal person that is not a citizen to vote in the Commonwealth of Kentucky? And we're, we're yes, we're in favor to prohibit. Because otherwise, we're saying that anybody that comes across that border illegally, they can get to walk right in and vote. They have a say so in who is going to be elected. And there are states all around us. I'm, I'm not saying the states are the joiners, but there are states all around us that's doing this. They're, they're issuing ID cards, but, and they're able to walk in with an ID card and vote. The folks in the Commonwealth of Kentucky to get an ID card, you've got to show proof it's you. You have to have a birth certificate, you have to have a passport. You have to have some type of documentation that shows that you are you. If, a, if an illegal person that's been in this country that broke the law, you're talking about a criminal, yes. came in illegally in this country and, and their states allowed them to vote. Since I've got it up, I'm going to tell you the Amendment 2 is to give parents choices in education opportunities for children. Are you in favor of enabling the General Assembly to provide financial support for education costs of students in kindergarten through 12th grade who are outside the system of the Commonwealth or outside the system of common public schools by amending the Constitution of Kentucky as stated below? It says, it is proposed that the new section be added to the Constitution of Kentucky to read the following. The General Assembly may provide financial support for the education of students outside the system of common schools. The General Assembly may exercise this authority by law. And it gives us sections and, you know, the numbers. And it's either a yes or no vote. And, uh, again, I, don't, I won't, wouldn't tell anybody what they need to do vote on that. But what they're saying is, is it, can the General Assembly provide funding to, to, to students that where parents can send them to private schools or schools other than a public school? John, John what is, is, a, is a private school the same as a charter school? No. It's yes. different? It, no, but yes. No, but yes? Yeah. It is a private school, but it is the elite of the private schools. Okay. Only two counties in Kentucky have had charter schools. What happened? Jefferson County and Fayette County. Okay, yeah. Two largest so counties. That's the only two counties that are, are, are in play for Amendment 2. Okay. So, but the public schools, that money's got to come from somewhere. Yeah. Okay. They have not dog tagged, earmarked right. where that money's coming from. Exactly. So they want to put the idea that it's coming from the general fund that goes to public schools. They're going to pull from that. That's what they want you to think. I don't know. You don't know. And they have not said so. No. I think that is the biggest unknown is they don't know. There's a lot of unknowns, but the biggest unknown is they don't know where they're going to pull the money from. Yeah. That's, that's the big one. So, research a little more. we got some time. And figure, figure out what, it's, it's a yes or no vote. Let's move on with this. Transgender males in women's sports. It's clear. One side says, absolutely. This six foot two, 220 pound man says, you know what? Today's Wednesday. I feel like a woman today. I'm going to dress like one. I'm going to act like one. I'm going to walk like one. And I think I'll register for women's sports. And this big male walks in and, and starts to play women's sports because of pressure that's put on places, schools, colleges, high schools, middle schools. I use that, that size as, as, a, as a, an example. And, and I'll just say college right now because this, this happened. This person goes in and they play basketball, they play volleyball, they actually play any kind of sport, and you know what? They excel at it. They do really well. Matter of fact, they do better than all the other girls. 
And sometimes they even, they even hurt and injure some of the other girls, the other ladies. And there's some ladies that have trained all their life in sports to get at a certain point where they could be amongst the best. And some of them get to that point where they train so hard they want to be the best. In a true, in their true gender, they are the best. Yeah. But you know what? They got the second place medal. Right. They got the second place trophy. Because there's some male mm -hmm. that wants to look like and act like, but you, you know what? They could even do surgery on somebody. But it does not change the DNA of who God made him to be. Amen. A man is a man. A woman is a woman. Amen. There's two genders, male and female. That's it. Yes. No other. Right. One side says, that's okay. Let them come into all sports. Well, I didn't make the basketball team on the men's team. Well, I'll just go over here and I'll be a, I'll, I'll let my hair grow out. And then I'll go over here and join the girls' team. <coughs> Universal health care. Choice is clear. One says, we want health care for all. Sounds good. I want everybody to have health care. Hey, go pay for it. How are we going to pay for it? They can't even come up with that. How are we going to pay for it? I want, I want everybody to have the best health care we can get, but how will that? Who's going to pay for it? You know who's going to pay for it. You know exactly who's going to pay for it. Gun control, including confiscating some weapons and mandatory buyback programs. One has said they want to do the buyback. They think that everybody that has certain style of certain types of weapons, they should be made to turn them into the government. The government will give them fair market value for what they pay. You know how that goes. Let me tell you something about guns, folks. I'm a very, very staunch gun advocate. I believe everybody, if you don't carry one, that's fine, but you should at least have a gun in your house yes. to be able to protect yourself. You shouldn't, shouldn't be a helpless victim of some evil person out there trying to cause a lot of problems. But here's, here's the thing. If the government can take your weapon, do you know why it's called the Second Amendment? I mean, that's pretty high up in the amendments. Isn't it? The First Amendment of the speech and press and, and religion. And the Second Amendment, they had said, you know what, we better put guns in there. Because if we don't have the Second Amendment, we sure wouldn't have the First Amendment. So it says, and, and I, I had to memorize it, but uh, I can't remember it all, but basically it says that the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It says, if you keep on reading, that's norm normally all you see, but if you keep on reading, it basically says to, to protect the people from an oppressive government. Let me tell you what one side says. Well, now, that's just designed for the, it says a, a well-regulated militia. They said, that, well, this day and time, a well-regulated militia is the National Guard. The National Guard is the ones that needs the weapons. Who's controlled by the state? It's controlled by government. What I'm, what I'm getting at, folks, is if they can disarm us, they can control us. Brother okay. Joe Crook don't have no. They don't follow the rules, do they, brother? He don't have a rule. No. And they can get them when nobody else can. And they will get them. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. Energy independence. Pretty clear on this. One says, drill, baby, drill. The other one says, nope. We're going all energy. We're going to get these windmills. We're going to get the wind to blow them. And uh, I know there's a lot of hot air going. We're going to get the wind to blow them. And then we're going to get these solar, big solar things. And listen, don't get me wrong. Me personally, and I'll speak for myself. I, I'm for a better way of, of getting energy. I'm for those things. But we can't stop everything we're doing and, and switch over to this. This, what we're doing is what built our country, basically. 
And you can't just go up and just stop that to change over for something else. Let's work on it. We may be getting there, but we're nowhere close. We're nowhere close. And we need to be energy independent from any other nations. We absolutely don't need to be buying, let me look at the camera. We absolutely don't need to be buying our oil from Venezuela or any other country. We can produce our own and it's cleaner than any other. We have no idea what, what, what they're putting in our oil and, and what, when it burns out there. We don't know what's been released. They're, they're to, they put all the EPA regulations on our country businesses, but they'll get it from overseas where they don't have any regulations. That makes a lot of sense. It's a government. Tax cuts versus tax increase. I'm just about done. Tax cuts versus tax increases. Pretty clear. If you look up, one side says we need more taxes. Matter of fact, the last percentage I heard, they wanted people to pay up to 80% taxes. Yeah. Oh, Lord. And live on 20%. Mm -hmm. One says, let's, let's cut taxes. If we cut taxes, we could put more people in the workforce. We can make our private businesses stronger. One that has worked in business and has been sexual, successful in business, and one that's lived off the government, basically. Put away personalities. Put away people. Look at policy. Look at the direction that you, as a voter, as a citizen of the United States, wants this country to go. And I saved the most important, I think, for last. I did this for all purpose. This is the unequivocal, 100% support for the nation of Israel. We have to, folks. If our leaders in office, no matter who they are, either side, if they do not support Israel 100%. Folks, I'm telling you, we're headed for destruction as a nation. I'm just telling you. I know what the Bible says, Genesis chapter 12 says it plain, I believe it's verse 3, I will bless those that bless you. I talk to Abraham, God says, I'll curse those that curse you. You look at every nation in history, that did not, well, not just support, but they did. They were persecutors of Israel and the Jewish people, and and you have to dig hard to find them now. They were. I'm talking about. They were empires. They were world powers that don't exist today. They countries exist. There's some countries still exist, but their empires sure don't. God, God made a point. See what happened today. I heard this, heard this this morning. It was on the news, so it's, it's, it's out there, evidently. I don't know if y'all heard this or not. Israel, or Iran has attacked Israel twice with missiles directly from Iran. Now, Iran has been in, in, in conflict or in war with Israel through proxy, through, through, the, through their elements of the Houthis, Hezbollah, and Hamas. It, Iran is, is funneling them money, funneling them weapons and rockets and everything that they're using against Israel is coming from Iran. Iran has sent twice rockets directly from Iran over to hit Israel. First time Israel said, we're going to respond, and they did. Just to show them that, it, and folks, when Israel is attacked, Israel has to respond. Yes. That's the way it is in, in, in that part of the world. If you don't respond, that's a sign of weakness, and they'll jump all over that. Israel said the second time that they, they fired, the, they sent the rockets, he said, we are going to respond. And Israel hadn't done that yet. But think about this. Today, it was reported. Somebody in our administration leaked out to the, to the press, to the media, that how Israel, how Israel was going to attack Iran. It was leaked. You think about that. No wonder Israel can't trust us. Israel made some moves in the United States. Well, they didn't contact us. They didn't tell us. Well, no wonder. I wouldn't tell this United States the way it is now anyway. 
Israel's got to do what they've got to do to, to defend their people, to protect their country. It was once said, all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing and good people to do nothing. Psalms 9, 9 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget God. God deals harshly with sending plagues. With, with, God deals harshly with nations that sin, that doesn't do what they're supposed to do. What basically, there's a lot of heathen nations out there. And a lot of those heathen nations, they, they're, they're struggling a whole lot worse than some of these other nations. But when God judges a nation, is what I'm trying to say. When He judges a nation, He, ju he, he judges them harshly by sending plagues, famines, and wars. I'm going I'm to throw this out there and I'll be done. I may have one more thing to that, but just, I'm just going to one more wrap it up real quick. <coughs> In 2005, the United States put pressure on Israel and said you need to give up the land in the Gaza Strip. There's some land out there that, uh, that needs to be turned over to the Palestinians and uh, the Gaza Strip looks like the best place. Now, Israel, the Jew, there's Jewish people that live there and they had homes built there. And they said, we want you to remove them out of their homes and give that over to the, the, the people there, the Palestinian people. And the pressure got so strong that they finally gave in. The United States pressured them that hard to give up that land. They had pictures on the news of people on top of their houses and the bulldozers coming in and them trying to say, don't take the home, don't take the house. And the bulldozers were coming in to mow down the houses and the people were sitting on top of their houses. Thinking this was started started in early early summer and it went into July, August. And, and in that particular time, that's when you saw people on their houses in Israel. I, think, I believe it's August 2005. We had one, if not the strongest hurricane recorded in the Gulf of Mexico called Katrina. And when it came through, and I can't remember the exact time frame, I, I, I've got it in an article somewhere, of how long it was when the Jewish people were on their rooftops. There was people in Louisiana sitting on their rooftops, surrounded by water, waiting on somebody to come and rescue them. Two thousand twenty-four. The United States is pressuring Israel. Stop this war. Cease fire. Israel saying, "We've still got hostages. We still got people that these savages that cut the heads off of Jewish people. They cut babies out of women that were pregnant and set babies on fire." And they still got our people, and you want us to stop and let them regroup and let them rearm and let them come back stronger? And Israel and the United States says, quit messing around. One leader used pretty much harsh words and told him, said, you need to stop this. You need to shut it down. 2024, when Hurricane called Helene. <coughs> Not long after that, we had another one called me up to come through. Folks, you, you've got to be very careful when we're dealing with the, native, the nation of the state of Israel. You've got to be very careful. God gave that land to His people. And who is man? I'm talking Jew or Gentile. Whoever's in charge over there, whoever's in charge over here, who is man to tell God that they have to give up that land that God gave them? We better be very careful. We better be, we, one of the things I would definitely look for when I was going to support somebody, who is in line to support Israel? Who's in line not to support Israel? And if there was any other, if, there was, if, if I didn't agree with anything 
over here on this wall. But they 100% back to Israel. That's what I'd have to lean to it. Because it's for, the, the, I believe our country, our country's future, will be determined on how we treat Israel. That goes back to verse 4, if my people. My people. I've got a couple other things, but let me end with this. Because <clears throat> the, 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 you get one side believes wholeheartedly, not just in socialism, but full fledged communism. Yes. <laughs> because one of them had a parent that was a professor at a university. In the writings that show they support communism. Some of the words that's being used in political slogans come from a communist writing on one side. When you get into socialist, socialism and communism, all we have to do is look at this way what kind of conditions it's in. Cuba. Tracking people. All these things are already in place, by the way. But here's what I wanted to, wanted to do. How is it so, or why is it so important? Is there a scripture that shows why is it so important that we have a leader that we're going to pray for? I don't care who they are, we're supposed to pray for our leaders no matter what. But what, why is it so important that we have a leader? that will do what's right. Especially do what's right in the sight of God. If we're praying that they would receive wisdom in, in Ephesians chapter 1, I believe it's verse 17 in there, it says that, uh, that they would have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we need to pray that. That our leaders, I don't care who it is, we need to pray that they have the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. If they're in the office, we need to pray for them. Now, I know that's difficult. Well, we say this way. It's difficult for me sometimes to pray for But that's my job. And that's what I'm required to do as my people. But the importance is Israel had a king. It was a king that was after God's own heart. His name was David. Little David. Gosh, God used him so mightily. But David took upon himself one time to number Israel. It says Satan himself came against him. God didn't tell him to do it. So there's times God will tell you to do something, but when you take it upon yourself to do it, you get it in your mind that, hey, I'll number Israel to see what I've done. Yeah. See if pride gets in there? So see what I've done. And God sent Gad the seer or the prophet mm -hmm. said so you go tell David he's got three choices mm -hmm. David said I'm in the dire strait matter of fact he used the word great strait I'm in a great strait after he told him one of them was that remember Robin he, he was either going to be pursued by the enemies he was going to be oh, he was going to be overtaken uh, he would lose his, lose the uh, the throne or uh, there would be a, a, a famine, a pest, there would be pestilence come through the land. And you know what? David did the wisest thing. He said, let me fall into the hands of a merciful God. Let God choose this. What to do? He brought pestilence across that land. And 70,000, 70,000 people lost their lives because of the decision the king made. The decision the king made. And David cried out to the Lord said, the sheep, they didn't do anything. He said, bring it all on me. Yeah. Right. David was repentant. He did repent. He said, Lord, just, just, just hold me responsible. Don't hold the sheep responsible. Because I made the decision. I made the dumb decision. That's how important it is. We choose the right leader. Somebody make a decision like that. 
and we have to pay for it. Our kids have to pay for it. Our grandkids have to pay for it. Folks, everything about the Word of God is going to come true. You can guarantee it. There's going to be wrath poured out. But folks, we can be out of here. If the Lord's going to tarry and He's not going to rapture the church and say four years, eight years, twelve years, twenty years. If we're going to be here, we need to be able to live peaceably. We need to be able to live in a country that we recognize rather than a country we don't recognize. We need to live in a, in a place where we've got a leader that will support Israel. Not tax us to death to where all we're doing is or slaves to the government. And that's all we'll be, slaves to the government. Are we retired then? We'll have to go back to work. Yeah. I know it sounds funny, but we would. If you're taxed 80%, how are you going to live? Yeah. That's all yeah. well, you know what? The same thing happened under the Roman Empire and the Roman government. They taxed people so much, you know what the men had to do? They had to go to serve in the military yeah. just to feed their family. Yep. Yeah. Because the tax got so high, the only way they could feed their family for a day is they had to join the military. If my country needed me, I'd, I'd go to that. That's how. That's that, how much I love my country. That's how we came over here anyway. Was getting getting rid of the, the government that we was in. We came over it's here to government. have our own religion and that's everything right. like that. And yeah. now that's they're letting us fall back into the same thing. History will repeat itself. It's repeating itself. What's coming around, folks? This is sound of the alarm. This ain't no, nothing to do with fear. Okay, don't let the spirit of fear come upon you. I knew what I had to do as a watchman to give you the information. Now it's up to you to do what you do. You know, I would that everybody this place would have been full. That a lot of people would hear what's being said. Because this, I, folks, I believe I, I didn't have this stuff. The Lord put it upon my heart. And I feel like this was a mandate that I had to do. You know, as, as a watchman, I, I feel that I have been relieved. One of the, one of the general orders in the military was you, you cover the all limits of your post until you're properly relieved. Properly relieved. You know what? I feel properly relieved of, of what I just re released to you. Now you just you just, you decide. Maybe you've already reached, maybe everything I said you already knew. <coughs> and you just decide. You decide not only how you want to live, but how you want your kids and grandkids to live. How you want your people you love. Hey, how, what kind of condition. And folks, as long as we're here, we're going to have to go through it. And I, I want it to be as less stressful and as less oppressive as I can do my part to make it. And I know you do too. I'm preaching to the choir. I know that. You all want the same things I want. But it's our choice. I believe God says, I've got a will. And I prayed that. I said, Lord, I want your will to be done. I said, not my will. Here's how I want it to go. But I, nevertheless, I want your will to be done. I believe life's at stake, lives are at stake at this. I believe whatever's going to happen, if, if something is in, in the process or in the path of happening, folks, I believe in prayer we can change things. Yes. I truly believe. And, and, and if we're on course, just like what the, the Word of God says, and this is going to happen, we don't know a time frame about what it gives us. It gives us a season. We don't know when things are going to take place. But folks, as long as we're here, we're going to have to go through and we're going to have to endure. Yeah. And I want it to be the best it can be until that time starts. If we're, if we're truly now, like I believe we are, in birth pains, and what the next step is after birth pains is, is the birthing. There's the delivery going to happen. And in birth pains, the contractions, ladies, y'all have had babies, you know what I'm saying. The contraction starts out small, and long periods of time in between, 
But the closer it gets, the contractions get harder and heavier, and it gets shorter and shorter. And we can see those things. And that's what he said when he said sorrows. This is the beginning. The end is not yet, but this is the beginning of sorrows. And the beginning of sorrows, I truly believe, is the birth pains of the land. Let's everybody stand. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for all you do. Thank you for who you are, not just for what you do, but for who you are. Father, as I stand here, I believe that I gave out everything that you want to spoken tonight. If I've left out anything that you need to get out, just give it to me, Lord. Let me say it. But I believe, Lord, I was obedient to do what you said to do. I believe the people have been informed. I believe they know. I believe they will decide and, and, and they will go out and they will vote. They will exercise their constitutional right and go out and vote. Father, we thank you for that freedom that you've given, given this nation, you've given us as your people who are called by your name. Your word tells us where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is freedom. And we're so thankful, Father, we don't take it for granted. Father, thank you for every person, every brother or sister that's in the congregation tonight, the ones that's watching on the live stream, the ones that will watch this message sometime down the road. And that's turned our hearts what you'd have us to do. If we would inform others, we, we would enlighten others as we had that opportunity to do. Father, we honor you, we praise you, we thank you for everything you do for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I just want to say just real quick, if anybody feels the need to pray, if anybody needs prayer, uh, just before we dismiss, uh, I'll pray, pray with you, pray for you. If everybody in here knows the Lord Jesus Christ as a perfect Savior, if you're watching tonight through live stream and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you believe in your heart, you confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, that God has raised in front of the dead, the Bible says, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart, you believe unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's that simple, it's that easy, the simplest of the gospel through salvation. All right. You want it all? Just okay. to okay. make sure I understand everything that you said tonight, for a joke. Yes. I believe that the Republican Party is more in line with the biblical beliefs than the Democratic Party. Would that be a true statement on my part? I believe it is. I believe that's a true statement. And, and there, there is there is voter guides that's out there. And a matter of fact, I can I can have one uh, here for Wednesday night. I, I can send it. And I can have it here at the end. It will list things out. It's, it's a, it's, it's, this is coming from the state. I believe it's called My, my Faith Values. It's a voter guide. And it tells you. And along those lines, you can um, Lee Watts has a YouTube channel. It's called Patriot Point. He is basically the missionary in Frankfurt on Capitol Hill. Okay. And so he's got uh, good information to, you know, help us okay. understand how they vote. Because, okay. I mean, like you said, it's not personality. If you look at their voting record. Just, just look what they stand for. Look how it lines up with the Word of God. And hopefully that lines up with your values. The Word of God should, if you're a Christian, line up with your values. Or your values should line up with the Word of God. Let me say it that way. That's a better way to say it. And look which one. We're not voting for perfect people. We're not, and, and there's never going to be a perfect person out there for that. But you go, the most that lines up with what the Word of God says is what our obligation is. It's our obligation to research it, to look at it. And, and uh, there's brothers and sisters, if you don't know, you can come and ask them and talk to them. I know there's, there's ones that, that do know and stay informed. You can ask them, hey, what, what does this mean? Just like what you said to me just a minute ago. If you're unsure or you, you want to say, well, could you be more clear about this? we got people that can, can do that and answer those questions. Thank you, John. Thank you for doing this. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Amen. I thank the Lord too. Yeah. Matter of fact, let's do that. Let's thank the Lord for the service. Lane, you got something to say? No, no. Oh, I thought you were reading again. I'm giving praise. <laughs> I'm giving praise. Oh, giving praise. Yes. 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 Yes.
Uh, Kathy, to the message, uh, so that they could all, just the seizure, not sure why, everything else is checked out okay. His heart and blood work was good. I know prayers worked. Praise God. So we're trying to watch you tonight, make sure you don't have any more. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, y'all are not going to be in front of any here tonight, but I looked on the thing on Facebook and they've been 235 already watched you. Praise God. Awesome. It's all. I believe. And it was me. Well, it, it was. I mean, and like I said earlier, I was just watching other ministers, and, and they're right on the right on this point, too. Mm -hmm. And so I say, Lord, thank well, we you. We need to know. If we don't know, that's right. We've got to know. We've got to know. We've got to be informed. We've got to stay informed. Right. Like I always say, used to, the Democrats listen for what the leader of the board members is. But then they went away from that. They left. So I'm a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> Brother John, I'm going to say, 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 i am going to say i am going to say i am because it's about a king that comes and he, 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 gets, he picks out three individuals according to their, their ability and gives them a talent. One five, one two, and one one. He said, you occupy or you do what I will give this for you to do until I come back. And you know what? The king, the owner, came back and he said, now what have you done with what I gave you? Sometimes we look at that and that is talking, a talent is money. He was talking about money and bringing interest and bringing, bringing things into the kingdom. That's what he was talking about. Bringing, bringing more, making more for the kingdom. But sometimes you have to look at the broader picture. Yeah. I put this in your responsibility to do that. What did you do with it? Right. Yeah. So as a watchman, I gave it out. So now it's up to you to, know, to do, what, do what you do with it. You know, your choice to do with it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's thank the Lord for this service that all day long. We've had such a blessed day, and then we'll, uh, I'll speak a blessing here before we leave. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this time together as brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Lord, we're so thankful for your word. You give us enlightenment. You give us wisdom and knowledge on things that we sometimes don't know what to do, but you tell us, and you direct us, and you guide us. I know it's ultimately, we, we're a full and free moral agent, and we can choose you gave us that ability. Lord, we want to choose the right way. We want to choose your way. We want to go and we want to support and we want to do things that are that line up with your will and your word. Father, we ask you to watch over us. We ask you to protect us. We ask you to lead us and guide us in all that we do. And we bring you praise on our Lord that you so deserve. Watch over us and give us travel and mercies and gather us back at your point in time. We won't fail to give you the praise that you so deserve. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you. May be gracious unto you. May lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. The name that's above every name, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray in the body of Christ. Amen. 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 Everybody be blessed. Have a blessed week. <coughs> yeah, I got some trap. I got a little ball of I'm going to